In this series of videos, we're going to talk about cash flow statements. Um, so just to begin, I, I think the name cash flow statement actually is really illustrative of what it is. It talks about um, how much cash a company had at the beginning of the year, how they spent their cash, how they received their cash, their cash inflows, their cash outflows, and it ends with how much cash the company had at the end of the year. So I think that's kind of a logical description for the cash flow statement. And when I was first starting to teach this, I had a student ask a, a pretty good question. They said, well, wait a minute, we already have a cash flow statement because we've learned how to make a cash GL account or a cash T account where we have our cash's beginning balance, We'll have some credits, which of course represent cash outflows. Whoa, sorry about my writing. We have some debits, which represent cash inflows, and we have an ending balance, of course, in a debit. Uh, and so the student said, you know, I, this is like a cash flow statement. I can see where the company's uh, getting their cash from. I can see where they're spending their cash. I know what's going on with cash by looking at the T account. And it's true, actually. If you look at a company's cash T account, you will understand what's going on with their cash. But in an introductory accounting class, we have very simple companies with very few transactions. If I looked at a real company, they would have thousands and thousands and thousands of cash transactions in a year, and their cash T account might be pages long. And so what financial statement users have said is, I don't want thousands of pages of cash information and have to synthesize it for myself. I would like you to summarize the cash inflows and cash outflows in a logical way. And that's why we have a, a cash flow statement. Um, the cash flow statement has three sections, and I'm going to discuss each of those three sections. In our next video, we'll do some examples on the cash flow statement, but right now we'll just look at those three sections. It has the operating section, the investing section, and the financing section. And so rather than just listing all of the transactions haphazardly or according to date, we're going to classify all of the, the cash-related items into these three categories, operating, investing, and financing. So I'll, I'll talk about the operating section first. It summarizes all of the transactions, that the cash-related transactions that contribute towards net income. So cash transactions that contribute towards net income. And so if you think about a company and you think, okay, like a company like Walmart, what are the cash related transactions that contribute to Walmart's net income? Well, the biggest one that for in terms of cash coming in would be getting money from their customers. Uh, you know, they sell stuff to their customers, their customers pay them money. So the biggest uh, operating cash inflow is typically cash collections from your customers. There's also a couple of big outflows in terms of day-to-day -day operations. And again, I always think of this operating section as the day-to-day -day operations of the business. The biggest cash outflow in this area is typically, well, there's a couple, cash payments for expenses like operating expenses, I mean, things like for Walmart paying their employees' salaries, keeping the lights on, paying the bills, those day-to-day -day operating expenses are absolutely a cash outflow. Another major cash outflow for a company like Walmart is buying their merchandise. So cash payments for, I'll call it merch, but that's merchandise, buying the stuff that they're going to put on the shelves. So. Uh, there's more than just that, but those are the major operating cash flows of a company. Cash coming in from your customers, cash payments out for expenses, and cash payments out for merchandise. So operating is sort of summed up by transactions of, of, involving short-term assets as, and liabilities as well as uh, uh, transactions that make up the company's net income. The next section we're going to talk about is the investing section. And the investing section, when I think investing, I think long-term assets. So um, Walmart, day-to-day, -day, spends lots of money buying their merchandise, selling their merchandise. They make a lot of money paying off their, their expenses. That's all day-to-day -day operations of Walmart, and that goes in the operating section. 
If Walmart decides to open up a new store in a new city, they'll spend millions and millions of dollars. But let's be clear, that's not a day-to-day -day operations thing. That's an investing activity. That's a long-term thing. So purchases and sales of long-term assets, usually capital assets, but still investments and other long-term assets, belong in the investing section. So I guess if I were to lay it out, I would say purchases and sales of long-term assets. The final section is the financing section and here I think about long-term liabilities and I also think about shareholders equity transactions. In the financing section it's all about where our money's coming from in the long term. Are we borrowing it from the bank? Are we getting it from our shareholders? Where's our money coming from? And also payments back to the bank and payments out to shareholders are tracked in this section as well. So in terms of long-term liabilities it would be any borrowing from the bank, it would be any issuing of shares to shareholders, of course repaying the bank and repurchasing shares I'll just say repurchasing are, are kind of the flip side of that coin and also payments out to shareholders in the form of dividends. So those are the major categories and, and again I, this isn't an exhaustive list but that's kind of how transactions have to be tracked through the cash flow statement. So you're saying okay what when did I debit cash was it a you know was it an issuance of shares in that case it should go in the financing section was it I sold an asset well in that case it should go in the investing uh, section was it a cash collection for my customers well in that case it goes in the operating section so whenever we look at transactions or we look at items we want to be able to classify them as either operating investing or financing and that's going to be key as we learn to work through the cash flow statement um, the final thing I want to touch on before we get to an example is just uh, a couple of formats for the cash flow statement. We're going to learn two different formats for the operating section of the cash flow statement. So there's the three sections operating, investing, and financing. Operating, there's two ways that, that uh, GAP allows us to present the operating section. Investing and financing doesn't matter which method we choose, it's the same. For the operating section, there's two ways to present it. There's the direct method, and there's a method called the indirect method. Now, in my mind and in my heart, I prefer the direct method. I think it's better, I think it makes more sense, um, and GAP agrees with me. GAP and IFRS say the direct method is better. So, you know, that gets the check mark from GAP. Unfortunately, or fortunately, if you look up your favorite company on the internet, most companies prefer to use the indirect method. And so because of this, I'm going to teach both. So I'm, the next video we look at, I'm going to walk you through the direct method, and I'll explain why I think it's better. Uh, and then in the subsequent video, I'll walk you through the indirect method, and I'll explain why I think it's not as good, but you still have to know how to do it and understand what it is. So that's going to be the theme of these next few videos. Uh, our next video, we're going to do an example, and I'm going to walk through the direct method of the operating section of a cash flow statement.